In this video, we're going to talk about how to publish services using bi-directional source NAT policies. Now, when we're first talking about this, your first question probably is going to be somewhere along the lines of, what do I mean by publishing services? Well, in theory, you have the internet out there uh, in the world, and then you have your Palo Alto firewall. And behind the Palo Alto, you have some sort of a server which is running a service of some sort. In this case, I'm going to say a web server. Uh, web servers run on port 80 and 443. So what we want is we have, if we have a client out here on the internet, uh, we want that client to be able to access ports 80 and 443 on that web server, but only ports 80 and 443 on that web server. This is oftentimes referred to as publishing a service. Now we're going to be using this, doing this by using a source NAT policy, which we are somewhat familiar with as far as allowing people to get out to the internet. But specifically, we're going to be doing this as a bi-directional source NAT policy, which allows traffic to come back the other way. So let's look at how this would look in our environment. This is my test environment right here. Now, I don't have a client out here on the internet. Uh, because I don't have that, I'm going to basically get rid of this internet area right here, and I'm going to repurpose my server zone as my internet zone. So I'm going to simulate the internet on my server zone. Once I'm done with that, I want to access this DMZ server. I want to access the web services off that web server. And so what I want to do is I want to publish that service to my new internet zone, and I want to assign that a static IP address. Now, we currently already have a .1 IP on the Palo Alto. When you're publishing things out to the internet, oftentimes you give them a static IP address. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and assign a new IP address to that same interface of .250. Now, I want it so that whenever this these machines hit the .250 IP address, it should be rerouted in the Palo Alto and readdressed up to the DMZ server IP. That's how we're going to be publishing this to the internet. So there's a couple of different steps that I need to do in order to make this work. First off is to make my simulated internet zones work properly, is I need to rename my zones. This isn't technically required, but uh, since I want my environment to be f very easy to understand both now and in the future, it will help out immeasurably. Second thing I want to do is I want to create my address objects. Specifically, there's two different IPs that we're talking about here, uh, which is the 192.168.50.10, the DMZ server IP, as well as 192.168.1.250, my simulated internet IP that I want to publish my DMZ into. Again, this step is not necessarily required, but those IP addresses don't mean very much to me, and therefore three weeks, three hours from now, I may not know what those are, but if I name my address objects properly, I'll be able to understand what they are in the future. Once that's done, I want to go ahead and create a security policy. Now, the security policies are what allows traffic to route from one zone to another, so that's definitely going to be necessary in order to specify which ports and services I want to be open. And then lastly is to create my NAT policy. Specifically, a bi-directional NAT policy. So let's go ahead and see how, what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by looking at my zones. I've actually gone ahead, see under network and zones, I have actually gone ahead and removed my zones already. Sorry, renamed my zones already. If the portal wants to load up for me, there we go. Uh, so my public internet, this was my server zone previously. I uh, went ahead and you could just click on these and then rename them right there. So went ahead and I already renamed my zones. As far as the uh, address objects, that's under object. 
and addresses, and I've gone ahead and I've created my two names right here. If I needed to create new ones, I would just click add, give it some sort of a useful description, type in an IP address, and then say okay. Uh, particularly, I am in the habit of naming these such as like DMZ web server. So DMZ is the zone, internet would be the zone, and then web server would be the service. Uh, just a good naming scheme by the, that I have found by keeping these services the same here. It's easy to understand how they map to each other going between the various zones. All right, so that was renaming the zone, creating the address objects. Now we need to create the security policy. So under policies, uh, you see I've gone ahead and I've deleted all my existing policies. The only ones there that are there are the default policies. Same thing under NAT, I have no existing policies either. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add in order to create a new security policy. And I'll call, just call this publish web server. Now the source zone for this is definitely going to be coming from the internet. It's clients coming from the internet. So I'm going to say add and I'm going to choose public internet since they're the ones that are going to be initiating the, com the communications to my system. Destination, well destination is going to be the DMZ, but the destination address is actually going to be my public IP address for my web server. This takes a little bit of work to get to get your mind on, but if I have .250 right here, my destination ultimately is going to be the DMZ zone, but I am targeting this IP address, so my destination IP is 192.168.1.20, a public internet uh, IP address, but my destination zone is the DMZ. Takes a little while to get your mind wrapped around it, yeah. Uh, applications. Well, go ahead and specify the few applications such as web browsing, SSL, and I'm gonna add in ping. Not always a good practice to include ping, but for troubleshooting standpoint, at least for this lab, it is a great thing to include. Uh, and then finally, actions allow. So that will allow traffic to go from the internet into my DMZ. Um, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And while that's going, I can open up a command prompt here and I'm going to ping dash T, 192.168.1.250. Uh, dash T is a continuous ping, so it will keep pinging regardless of what happens. So we can see even though the security policy is in place, it's still not quite enough. We still need to translate the addresses from our simulated internet addresses or public IPs into our private IPs that are in use in the DMZ. So we'll click close. And now we need to come over to our last step of creating the NAT policy. Go and click add call this publish web server always a good practice to keep the names of the NAT policies and the security policies the same so you don't get confused later on when trying to troubleshoot them the original packet so the scenario we're working on here is even though this is our end goal the scenario that we're gonna do is basically we're gonna assume this DNZ web server is going out to the internet we're gonna Basically, we're gonna allow our DMZ web server to access the internet. We're specifically gonna say, hey, when you leave, don't, don't use this IP. No, use the .250 IP that we've already assigned. Always use that .250 IP, and then don't let anybody else use that .250 IP. That would allow our web server to access the internet. There's also a bi-directional checkbox that we're going to see, which essentially it creates a second rule that brings traffic back in. So that if somebody hits the .250, it will go back into the web server. So in that case, the source zone, since we're simulating coming from the DMZ, 
or from the web server in the DMZ, our source zone is going to be the DMZ. Again, the destination zone would be the public internet and the interface that the public internet is on. The source address, we do have to be a little specific here. The source address will be, there we go, our DMZ web server. Since we are going to specify one IP to one IP, uh, we do have to specify which IP this traffic will be coming from. We then click on translated. We'd previously seen the source address translation and we'd previously chosen dynamic IP and port. We want to specify static IP. What the static IP does is it specifically says one IP on this side and one IP on this side. It maps directly, hard codes essentially, one IP to one IP in the different zones. So the, as we said here on the original, the source was the DMZ, so then the destination will be the internet. And now we choose the bi-directional option, which essentially creates two different mappings, one going out, another one coming in, and we say, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and commit that. Commit, and let's look at our pings as that's going on. As that commit continues, it, the pings should begin to respond. There we go. We can see our pings are now starting to go through. And now if I hit that IP address, the 192.168.1.250, we should get access to the web page. So that was configuring a source net or configuring publishing, utilizing source net and a bi-directional communication.